this presentation is over the digestion system and uh, body metabolism. Um, primarily what we're going to fo uh, focus on uh, is the gross anatomy of this system and the function of those organs. We are going to leave out a lot of the physiology. <clears throat> What we need to understand about the digestive system are its functions, and they're pretty self-explanatory. We eat or ingest food. We break it down, both by chewing and chemicals in our digestive tract. We absorb those nutrients, once they've been broken down, into our bloodstream. And then what we can't use, we have to get rid of by defecating. Now, the digestive system itself contains two main groups uh, we have the organs of the alimentary canal, really just one big tube from mouth to anus with various outpouchings and that the food gets processed through. And then we have some accessory organs which either add enzymes or take fluids out or take solids out and modify those in some way. If you look at this, you see the major organs of the digestive system, and we're going to go through these one at a time and just talk a little bit about each. First off, with the alimentary canal, we have to look at the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Um, we should add in here after large intestine the rectum and then the anus, and this is essentially the flow of food. Let's talk about the mouth first. The mouth is sometimes referred to as the oral cavity. Uh, it is surrounded by the lips and cheeks that form the walls of this chamber. We have a hard palate, which is made of bone with uh, um, skin overlaying it, which is the front part of the mouth. And then we have a soft palate in the back, which acts as a flap and seals off the nasal cavity when we uh, swallow. And then we have the uvula, which is the little dangly thing in the back, which also is involved in sealing that off. If we go on, uh, the outer part of the mouth between the cheeks and the teeth, that's referred to as the vestibule. Um, the oral, pro oral cavity property is everything that lies within the teeth and it includes the tongue and I don't need you to know the attachments of the tongue. Uh, the tongue is the most muscular structure in the mouth. It has muscle going in all directions and it is quite strong. Um, we have tonsils and there are palatine and lingual and there's actually another group that are called to called pharyngeal tonsils. The view of the oral cavity so that you can get a sense of where everything is. So the vestibule lies here, oral cavity proper behind the teeth, surrounded by the hard palate and the soft palate, and the tongue. And here you can see lingual tonsils, you can see palatine tonsils, and there are pharyngeal tonsils as well. Now, the mouth cavity uh, as you look in, again, you can see hard palate, soft palate, uvula, the tonsils. What the mouth does, its purpose, is to chew food. Um, we masticate, uh, and that is to break down large pieces of food into smaller pieces. And we mix it with saliva, which does a number of things. It uh, forms it into a bowl that is easily swallowed. It allows us to taste the food. And there are some enzymes in saliva that initiate the breakdown of some of our nutrients. The tongue also is involved in initiating uh, swallowing. Uh, we get food back to a certain level, and we're going to trigger a reflex action, which is going to cause us to um, swallow. And, of course, on the tongue are the taste buds, which allow for the sense of taste. Now, once we have gotten past the tongue, we're into an area that is shared, respiratory tract and the digestive tract. And this part 
is referred to as the pharynx. Now, the nasopharynx, that is a part that um, generally we should not put food through, uh, although we've all blown milk out our nose at one point in time or another. It is supposed to be exclusively for respiratory. Now, the oropharynx, that's the part that you can actually see at the back of the throat. And down lower, we have the laryngopharynx. And this is the port part where the respiratory tract and the digestive tract split. And in the case of the digestive tract, we go to the esophagus. And again, just a look at this anatomy, you can see the oropharynx is at the back of the throat. The nasopharynx is up behind the soft palate. And then the laryngopharynx is down in the throat to the point where we split from the trachea. Now, the purpose of the pharynx, it serves as a passageway for air and food. We have uh, muscles that do a rhythmic contraction to force the food down, and that rhythmic contraction is called peristalsis. Ultimately, the pharynx gets this to the esophagus, which then carries it onto the stomach. The esophagus is the tube that leads from our throat to our stomach, and it is exclusively a food passageway. It's relatively short. It's about 10 inches long. It runs behind the heart and through the diaphragm and meets up with the stomach, which is below the diaphragm. It is a sausage shaped uh, about the size of, you know, a one pound roll of sausage uh, when it's empty. It can, con it can hold up to about a liter of food. Uh, conducts food by peristalsis again, which is a, or uh, the esophagus, I'm sorry, conducts food by peristalsis uh, down to the stomach where it reaches the cardioesophageal sphincter. Now this sphincter will not open until that uh, wave of peristalsis has reached it. So sometimes you may eat something like a hot potato and you'll get this burning sensation and then that sensation goes away and it's because once that wave has reached the valves opened and the food's actually been able to drop into the stomach. Now the stomach itself, as I said a moment ago, I uh, got a little ahead of myself, but the stomach is a uh, muscular organ. Food enters it from the esophagus through the cardioesophageal sphincter that can also be referred to as the cardiac sphincter or the gastroesophageal sphincter. Uh, there are a number of names for it. Um, it has another valve on the opposite end, which is the pyloric valve, which takes the food that it has processed and moves it into the small intestine. In terms of the anatomy, the heart, it, or the uh, stomach anatomy uh, has a cardiac region near the heart. Uh, it has a fundus, which is a bulbous area at the top, which is actually filled largely with air. We have a body, and then we have the pylorus. And inside the stomach, we have numerous folds so that it can expand and hold uh, more food. Externally, because it is curved, we do have a lesser curvature and a greater curvature. Looking at a picture of it here, you can see where these structures are. The cardioesophageal sphincter is going to be right here, and it will open and close to allow food into the stomach. The domed area that we're seeing right here, that is the fundus, and again, it's largely filled with air here. You see we have the greater curvature, and the lesser curvature, and at the bottom we have the pyloric sphincter. Now, within the stomach you see all of these different folds which allow it to expand and also give it good surface area for absorption. Here is a dissected heart, or dissected, sorry, stomach, uh, so that you can see the inner folds as well. And if you were looking at a dissected animal, you would note that the heart line, or that the 
uh, stomach lies largely under the liver. Again, you can see it underneath and attached to the liver there. Now the purpose of the stomach, <clears throat> it is a temporary storage tank for food. There's no doubt about that. Um, it will hold food for various amounts of time depending on the nature of the food. It is a site of food breakdown. Specifically, it is a site for protein breakdown. Um, this is where chemical breakdown of proteins begins. Chemical breakdown of other uh, nutrients, uh, lipids, and carbohydrates begin elsewhere. We have a stomach because we eat proteins. And proteins are very, very hard to uh, break into individual pieces uh, down to the amino acid level, so they have to be exposed to a very powerful acid. Um, in fact, the pH in the stomach is somewhere around 1. Now, this is one of the reasons why diets like the Atkins diet work, <clears throat> because if you eat a high-protein diet, the protein has to stay in the stomach longer to be broken down, and then uh, you don't feel as hungry as fast. You feel full. If there are carbohydrates, they don't spend that much time in the stomach and get passed on into the small intestine. Well, the product that it passes once it sends stuff through this pyloric valve into the small intestine is chyme, or processed food. And now we're at the small intestine. Sorry, my dog started barking. Um, so, uh, let's see, where were we? We were at the small intestine. And this is the body's major digestive organ. Most of the digestion occurs here. Uh, it breaks down all of our nutrients. It breaks down amino acids. It breaks down carbohydrates. It breaks down fats. And it's also the site of nutrient absorption. So after that breakdown, we can absorb this into our bloodstream and into our lymphatic system so that our body can use it. Structurally, it's a long muscular tube that extends from the pyloric sphincter of the stomach down to another sphincter, which is the ileocecal valve, which connects it to the large intestine. Um, it is suspended and held in place in the digestive tract by connective tissues referred to as mesenteries. <clears throat> Once we get into the small intestine, we really have three areas. Uh, we have the duodenum. I've also heard it pronounced duodenum. But uh, the duodenum, which is actually attached to the stomach. Uh, so food coming from the stomach goes into the du duodenum from the pyloric sphincter. Um, we have the jejunum, which is the mid part, and then we have the ileum, which extends from the jejunum to the large intestine. This is where the uh, ileocecal valve is located, which empties into the large intestine. Now, both types of digestion occur in the small intestine. We have mechanical and we have chemical. Chemical digestion begins in the small intestine, um, breakdown of carbohydrates really begins there. Breakdown of lipids begins there. Remember that the chemical digestion of proteins began in the stomach. There are a number of enzymes that are produced both by the cells of the small intestine and by the pancreas which allow the breakdown of these nutrients. And those enzymes are carried by pancreatic ducts uh, which dump this uh, pancreatic juice right at the opening, uh, right after the opening where it leaves the stomach and gets into the small intestine. There's also a substance called bile, which is formed by the liver and enters through the same opening. It is for fat metabolism. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. Anyway, right now, uh, this seems like a good place to stop. We will pick up again on an additional presentation.